uh, in the previous class, we learned about French predictor. So I believe this, uh, this French predictor may be a little bit tricky for you because this is the first technology that exploit prediction, okay? So actually this prediction technology is, is frequent, so widely and frequently used inside of our modern uh, process architecture because uh, thanks to the, this prediction technology that we can dramatically improve the performance of our processors, actually the modern processors. So in the pipeline, the processor, we, we are learning about the hazard. So I explained that hazard is an event that wastes clock cycles. And then wasting clock cycles means the performance of this pipeline processor is degraded, okay? So we need to avoid the hazard actually. So, and then also in the previous class, we learned how to reduce data hazard uh, in the pipeline processor. And then, so we are learning how to uh, reduce control hazard by branch instructions. And then, so actually, so we learned the <clears throat> control hazard by branch prediction by moving the location of uh, branch resolution. So that means that the condition of the branch, that is the result of a branch is reserved at ID stage. Okay. But with uh, this uh, modification, we cannot avoid the uh, control hazard because on one cycle is still wasted. So in order to reduce the control hazard, we, we can apply prediction technology, it's the branch predictor. And then in the previous class, I explained that the branch predictor is composed of actually branch prediction buffer. There is the branch prediction. A branch prediction buffer and branch target buffer. And then you need to know that this, this branch predictor buffer and branch target buffer are indexed by program counter. And then we do not use the entire bit of the program counter because it's very large. And so we just use the, the part of the program counter, okay? So, so if the so if the width of the pro program count is a 64 bit, then that means the this branch predictor buffer will have two to 64 entries, and then it's, it is impossible to implement in, inside of the processor. So we just use the part of a bit, such as the 12 bits uh, in the program counter. So then we can reduce the the number of entries in the branch predictor buffer and branch target buffer. So in the instruction fetch stage, this branch pred prediction buffer and then branch target buffer is also accessed by program counter. You know, the in, in the instruction fetch stage, the instruction memory is also accessed by program counter. So if the branch predictor is included in the, our uh, pipeline process of design, then at, in the instruction fetch stage, the uh, program counter with the program counter, this processor accesses, access, accesses branch prediction buffer, branch target buffer and instruction memory, okay? And then based on the, this predicted value, that means the predicted result of branch instruction and the target of the branch, uh, we can uh, fetch the next instruction based on the result of this branch prediction, okay? 
without any waste of clock cycles. Hmm? But if the French prediction is incorrect, that means that the French prediction is missed. So you need to know the meaning of hit or miss. So this is the predict, just the prediction. So that means that the result of a prediction can be incorrect. That means that the real result may be it's real result can be different from the, the result of the prediction. So that event is called miss. And then if the, the result of the prediction is equivalent to the result of real, uh, the, the result of the real branch instruction, then that event is called hit. Okay, you need to remember this terminology because in this computer architecture course, hit or miss, will be frequently used actually in memory when in chapter five, it's a memory hierarchy, okay? So the, the prediction can be missed. So in this case, also the, the clock cycles are also wasted because the predictions are missed, okay? So, Actually, I posted the, the third homework the, the, because we conclude, conclude the chapter four today. So, and then if you see the homework problems, then you can find the, uh, maybe one or two problems regarding the French prediction, okay? So please uh, try to understand the French prediction mechanism in the process architecture, okay? And then uh, in the previous class, I briefly explained about the exceptions. So exception, so as you can uh, expect, this is the just rare events. So, so what, what then, what is the, uh, what are the free, frequent or normal events inside of a processor? So normal event mean that uh, the instructions are executed. So that means that normal instructions are executed by processor. So those are the normal operations of processor. But sometimes exception can happen inside of a processor. And then this, these are the rare events. So that were, is the unexpected event. So I also explained the examples of rare events. What is the rare event? It's kind of a, it's a typing. So from keyboard and then, or so we are, we can move um, mouse uh, that, that is connected to our control system. So these rare events are caused by IO devices like keyboard, mice, or touch screens. Okay. Also, unexpected events. So, unexpected event mean events mean that it's uh, some some uh, incorrect operations or unexpected instructions or some unexpected uh, operands given to the instructions. So for example, so we learned about the instruction set architecture, like so based on the, this instruction set architecture, instructions are organized and these instructions are stored in our instruction memory. And then these instructions are decoded inside of our processor, but sometimes uh, it's a bad, bad compiler. Or so I don't know the reason, but by some reason, undefined instructions can be stored in the memory. So, so, so you cannot expect the cause of the, these unexpected instructions, but the instructions 
but these instructions are not defined inside in the instruction manual, but these undefined instructions can be stored in the memory. And then these instructions are given to the processor. So in this case, the processor cannot understand this instruction. So this, is, this event is called the unexpected event. And then in the, in the case, then this undefined instructions should be handled by computer processors or operating systems because this is the undefined instruction. So that they may cause some errors or some unexpected operations inside of the processor. So and then in order to avoid all these unexpected operations inside of a processor, then we need to handle the, this unexpected events. So these are the uh, example of exceptions. Well, so, and then this some rare event, these, these are the ex actually expected events, but those events are rare events. So sometimes these rare events are handled by interrupt. Okay. And then this unexpected event is uh, so called the exceptions. Okay. Sometimes these interrupt are interrupt events are also called exceptions because those are very rare events. Okay. But Handling interrupt or handling exceptions are very similar. So we can apply the same uh, handling mechanisms for these uh, interrupts or exceptions. And then actually these events are also handled by processors. That means the, these exceptions are need to be handled by computer processor hardware, computer processor hardware. So that means the processor hardware need to support handling exceptions. And then in order to support this exception handling, then we need to add more hardware. Well, we need to uh, modify, or we need to include some specific architecture for handling these exceptions, okay? So we need to remember that. In order to uh, support data folding, we need to include the data folding logic. And then in order to support the hazard detection, then we need to design hazard, de hazard detection unit inside of a processor. And then that's the same. In order to support exception handling, then we need to also include the hardware that handles exceptions inside of a processor. So, so, but usually the hardware just report where exception happens and then why exception happens. Okay, so where means that the instructions that cause exception on the exception, and then why means that is the reason of a certain exception. So just how do you just report the where exception happens and why exception happens? Okay. Then software like operating system receives the, the, the where instruction happens, that means the, that means the instruction that cause, causes exceptions and then why, the reasons of exceptions. So this where and why is given to the software and then software receives the, this information and then uh, software just so provide the, some handling, exception handling code. That is the software. And then this software is just actually supported by operating system, okay? So in order to support the exception handling, then we need to, the hardware need to report 
the first detector exception and then need to report the which instruction causes exceptions and then why exception happens. So the first where, so that means that which instruction causes an exception. So in order to identify the, this instruction, then we need to store from counter. Understand? So, so if we you if we uh, know a certain program count of a certain instruction, then we, we can identify this instruction. So identify. So what does identify mean? It's like ID. So actually the Korean uh, citizens have citizen ID. <laughs> It's called the citizen ID. So with the citizen ID, that we can identify some uh, individual person. And that's the same. If we know a program counter of a certain instruction, we can identify this instruction. And then in order to identify which instruction causes an exception, then we can just store the program counter, okay? So not provide where exception happens, then the risk five has, uh, has the supervisor exception program counter, it's called the SCPC. So that is, that is the register that stores the current program counter, okay? So SCPC is stored, so the, this risk five processor has SCPC register. And then in order to report the codes, codes of exceptions, that means that the Y exception happens, then also risk five support the supervisor exception codes register. It's called, it's called S codes. Okay. So not, not report where and why exception happens, the risk five provide SCPC and as code registers. So in the SCPC, the current program counter is just stored. And then as code just stores the reason of exceptions, okay? And then if the exception is detected, then I also uh, explained that the software, the the software handles the, these exceptions. So software means that it's the, some specific instructions like code. So this is just a, the group of code, group of instructions, and then this specific code is executed. So we need to jump to the handler. So this is the, just the software. So this software is also stored in the a certain space of memory. So we, we can just change the program counter that points the, the location of a handler, okay? So, it's the, so this slide just explain how the exceptions are handled by the processor, okay? And then sometimes we can use the vector to interrupt. So that means that the, based on the, some, the reasons of exceptions, so this information is stored, this information is represented as the vector. And then these, these vectors are just reported to the operating system and the operating system receive the these vectors and then execute the specific handlers, okay? So that, that is also, I, I also explained how the handler executed. So I mentioned that the hardware just report the where exception happens and the why exceptions 
happen. Okay. So this information is provide this information is provide to software using SCPC and as codes. So then if this information is given to the software that is operating system, then exception handler. It's uh, some, some code is executed. So that means that the PC is changed to the, the PC of the exception handler, okay? So, and then the ex these exceptions, this exception can be handled by software, okay? So that means that the required action is performed by exception handler software, that is the exception handler code. And then if this exception is recoverable, that means that the program can be recovered from exceptions, then we can restart the, uh, the point where exception happens. So for example, exception happens on a certain instruction that execute add instruction, like add instruction. Then if the exception is caused by this add instruction, then exception handler is executed, so handler, handler code. And then if this exception, this exception is recoverable, then the processor restart the, this add instruction, okay? But you know, the, the handler just performs the required actions. So we can recover from the, it can be recovered from the, this event, exception, exception event. So we can ju just execute the, this add instruction, okay? Or if we cannot recover these exceptions, so that means that this exception is called the unrecoverable exceptions, okay? Then we can just terminate the programs, okay? Then we just report the, the location of the exception and then the reasons of exceptions to the users, okay? So for example, if a certain variable, a certain variable like a equal one and then b equal zero and c equal a divided by b, it's a divided by zero. Then, so actually, uh, this operation will generate an an, not a number, an an. So actually, c is not a number. So we cannot we cannot uh, store any uh, normal number for this variable c. But in this case, we cannot uh, continue this program. Okay. But in this case, with, with op the operating system, just terminate the, this program. Okay. Because this exception is not recoverable. Okay. And then the operating system just report the why exception happens and the where exception happens like here, okay? Yeah, this, this, is, <laughs> this is not normal operation. So maybe it is also tricky. So, and then let's see how the exception is handled in the pipeline processor, okay? in the pipeline, the processor. So it's very similar to the control hazard. So that means that, so actually the, this exception, the handling exception is very similar to uh, executing branch instruction, but it's a little bit different. So let's see this example. So this is the example instruction. And then let us assume that the exception happens in EX daisy. So that means in the in the ALU. So this is just the example. So exception happens for this in add instruction in EX daisy. 
Okay, so what should we do? So, because exception happens for this instruction, this add instruction, actually, what is the result of this add instruction? The result means that we, this add instruction just reads opponent from register x2 and x1, and then what is the result of this add instruction? That means that the change of state, that means memory or register file. So what is changed? This destination register is changed. But what's the problem? The exception happens for on this instruction. So that means that if this instruction is executed, then incorrect result or very harmful result can be stored in the memory or register file. So in this case, it's register file. So we need to prevent the right back of this add instruction. So if this add instruction is executed, the content of the register file will be changed but we need to avoid it, okay? So, so, and then this is the pipeline. So that means that this is the add, add x1, and there can be some formal instructions like load and then sub instruction. And also there can be following instructions in the pipeline, pipelines, okay? Like store and uh, multiply. So the pipeline processor, they can be formal instructions or they can be following instructions. Okay, so, and then exception happens for this add instruction. So what should we do for this, these formal instructions? So actually, exception happens for this add instruction. So these are normal instructions. Okay, so the result of this formal instruction should be updated to the memory or register file. So that means that formal instructions should be completed in the pipeline processor. Okay, and how about the following instructions? Because on exception, happens in this, this add instruction, the result of add instruction can be incorrect or very harmful. And then if the following instruction is if influenced by the result of the add instruction, <laughs> then they can be the, the result of following instructions can be incorrect or also harmful, harmful. Okay, so we need to cancel following instructions in the pipelines, okay? So if exception happens, then first we need to prevent the right back of the, this current instruction, and then we need to complete the formal instruction like previous instructions because these are normal instructions. And then we need to flush these instructions. Also, exception happens for this add instruction. And then we need to also flush this current instruction. So flush add and following instructions, the subsequent instructions. Because this add instruction may generate incorrect or harmful, harmful result. And then we just record the SAPC and as code registers and then call handler. These are the required steps for handling exceptions inside of pipeline processor. Okay.
So this is the I product architecture that handles that can handle the exceptions. So as you can see, uh, this pipeline. So actually, the previous example we we just assume that the exceptions can happen in uh, ex stage. So you can find the as codes and as CPC registers in this uh, ex stage here, and then also if exception happens at this is ex stage, then we need to flush it. The, the instructions in ex stage and then instructions in ID and instruction fetch stage. So this pipeline flush logic is also included. Okay. So actually, the handling session is a little, is a more more complex complex than the uh, other. Uh, branch instructions or some data folding or hazard detection. But so we just show the, the very simple example. So that means the exception only happens at EX stage, okay? And then, so I also explained here. So this, this is also the example. So this is the example code that, uh, example code, and then the exception happens in this add instruction. So then this is the PC, so for the count of the instructions. And then so you can see some formal instructions here and then follow instructions here. And then this is the handler code, exception handler code. And then also this is the PC of the exception handler. So if you see this handler code, you can find the handler. This is also software. So that means that the handler code is composed of normal instructions, okay? So that means that the exception happens for this add instruction, then we need to jump to the, the handler code here. So that means that jump means that the PC is just change it to the, the PC of the, the, this handler code. So we can jump to the, is using this PC. Okay, so let's see the example. So when, when these instructions are executed in pipeline processor, then you can find that add is here and then or these, these or and end instructions are in the memory stage and the write back stage. So these are formal instructions, okay? And then sub and load instructions are following instructions. And then exception happens for in, in this add instruction, okay? So what should we do for this or and end instruction? Or and end instruction should be completed. And then sub and load instruction, also including add instruction. These instructions should be flushed. So that means that those instructions should be canceled in the pipeline processor. Okay. So as you can see, this is the PC, the PC of the add instruction is for C. And then when exception happens in this add instruction at ex stage, then you, you can, as you can see, this 4C, the PC, is stored in SCPC register. And then when exception happens, this add instruction should be flushed. So you can see the is in order to Flush this add instruction, meaning we can change the all control signals as zero, zeros. Okay. Also, this ID flushy and then instruction patch flushy is also included in the this pipeline processor. So actually, we also we implement we implement the ID flush logic for data hazard. So we can use the, this ID flush logic uh, for the, this exception handling. 
and then also we can also we can plus the instruction fetch stage. Okay. So at the next cycle, so as you can see, the or instruction is in the right back stage. So or instruction is not flushed because or instruction is the formal instruction. So or instruction propagates to right back stage, but add instruction is flushed because exception happens in this add instruction. So bubble is in the memory stage. Also, following instructions are also flushed. Right? So as you can see, sub and load instructions are also flushed. Bubble, bubble here. And then, as you can see, you can find the SD instruction from where instruction inst exception handler. Okay. So you can find the this instruction. So the load instruction of the this exception handler code is fetched. Okay. So the behavior of the, the operation of exception handling in pipeline processor is actually very similar to French instruction. Actually, mispredicted branch instruction. Okay. So, so what is the mispredicted branch? So the mispredicted branch means that the predicted result of the branch instruction is different from the real result of the branch instruction. So in this case, we need to cancel, we need to cancel the already fetched instructions in the pipelines. So cancel means that the instructions are flushed in the pipelines, okay? And then the new instructions are fetched from the instruction memory based on the real result of the branch instruction. So for the mispredicted branch, the fetched, already fetched instructions by this mispredicted branch instruction is flushed. So that means that these instructions are flushed. So in, when exception happens, and then new instructions by uh, new inst so real new instructions by real event of this branch instruction is fetched from the instruction memory. So that means that the instructions of exception handler is fetched from the instruction memory. So that, that means that the operation is very similar. Okay. So that means if and then when exception happens the instructions are flushed from the pipelines. So that means the clock cycles are wasted. That's all. These are also hazard, okay? And then what kind of hazard? Which control hazard, okay? So just to remember that, how the exceptions are handled by pipeline processor. Just to remember these steps, okay? And then, so let's see how the multiple exceptions can be handled in the pipeline processor. So what is the problem of multiple exceptions? So multiple exceptions also can be can happen inside of a pipeline processor. So for example, this is the instruction fetch, instruction decoding, execution, memory, and write back. And then exception may happen 
in memory stage by load instruction, and then exception happens in ID stage by any instruction, like undefined instruction, like maybe add here. And then there are any instructions of and store on <laughs> any other instruction. So, so in this case, two instructions happen, uh, two exceptions happen simultaneously. Okay, so the exception happens in load instruction at memory stage and the exception happen in add instruction at ID stage. So what should we do? The exception happens simultaneously at the same time. So it, what should we do? So these are required steps for handling exceptions. What should we do? What should we do? So, so in this case, this so if we see the, the sequence of the instructions like the store, load, sub, add, and or instruction. So exception happens for load instruction and exception happens for add instruction here and here at the same time, the same cycle. What should we do? So what is the formal instruction, formal exception? The exception for load instruction is the formal exception. So the computer processor first handle this exception. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. Be because if we just see the sequence of instructions, this exception in this load instruction is the former event. And then, you know, the computer processor needs to execute every instruction sequentially the, based on the order of instructions. And then this order need to be kept in the processor, okay? So if we see the just sequence of these instructions, right, we can know that. So this is the formal instruction. So that means that the event related to this load instruction should be handled first, okay? Because the add instruction is the following instruction. Do you understand? So in this case, even though the exception, uh, these two exceptions happen at the same time, we just ignore the exception for this add instruction and then we just, the processor first handles the exception by this load instruction. Do you understand? So in this case, the store instruction is completed and then these or add sub load instructions are flushed and then SCPC and then as calls registers are recorded for the exceptions by this load instruction. And then these registers are reported to exception handler software, okay? And then this exception is recoverable, then the load instructions of add, and then this add and or instructions are also re-executed. And then what will happen? 
Actually, the exception for this load, in, load instruction is already handled. And then the exception for add instruction will happen again. So we need to also handle the exception by this add instruction. Okay. So you need to remember that the order of exceptions should be kept. So that means that the, the order of exceptions are handled based on the order of instructions. So in the pipeline processor, the, the time when the exception happened is it's not, it's not it's not important. So that means that sometimes, so let's see that this case, this is a very rare case, but we need to consider the, these rare cases. So actually the code of cases are more complex in the pipeline processor. Okay, EX memory, and then write back. So let us assume that the load instruction is here and then the add instruction is here. So, and then the exception by this add instruction happens when add instruction is in ID stage, like undefined code. So exception happens here and the load instruction is here. What's the problem? After one cycle, the add instruction is flushed because the exception happens. And what's the problem? The load instruction can be here but another exception happens by this load instruction, like page fault. So what should we do? So in this case, the exception by this add instruction happens earlier if we just focus on the time because this exception happens in ID stage. The problem is that after one cycle, the exception by load instruction happens at memory stage. Do you understand the, this situation? So what should we do? In this case, even though exception by this add instruction happens earlier in the pipeline processor, the load instruction is the formal instruction. So first we need to handle the exception by load instruction first, because this is the formal instruction, okay? So in this case, the exception by this add instruction is just ignored because it's a flushed. And then the exception by this load instruction is handled first. Do you understand this case, this, this situation? So you need to remember that the order of instruction is more important when we consider the exceptions, okay? Okay, so no, uh, I know this is a little bit a tricky uh, uh, topic in the, in the pipeline processor because it's a very rare case. It's a different from what they learn, but every, what we've learned in the in this course. But sometimes this is actually the processor need to support the, these cases. Okay, so we need to we need. To maintain the order of instructions. So that means that we need to also consider the, the order of exceptions in our instructions. And then this order should be kept regardless when the exception happens, okay?
Okay, uh, so I will conclude that this chapter four. This is the, uh, the, in, the in the chapter four, we learned, we learned how to uh, build a process architecture. So we started from the uh, single cycle process design, and then we, we learned about the pipeline architecture. So with the pipeline architecture, we, then we can uh, increase the performance of a processor because we can reduce the delay of a critical path, okay? So then we, with the pipeline processor, we can apply faster clock. That means the clock rate is higher. The clock frequency is higher. So we can improve the performance of a processor. But with the pipeline processor, the hazard can happen. So the hazard means that the clock cycles are wasted. And then because of hazard, then the performance of a pipeline processor is degraded. Okay. And then that so that means that we need to add more hardware, and then more some hardware units that can handle hazard. Okay. And then so it can be uh, a little bit tricky because the, actually the architecture of the, this pipeline the processor is more complex than the architecture of a single cycle processor. And then in order to support the, the hazard detection or data forwarding or control hazard, control hazard uh, handling, or also, also exception handling, then the architecture or processor design of the pipeline the processor is more complex. Okay, so, so actually the baseline scheme, the basic scheme of a pipeline processor is very simple. So you can just split the, the required steps for executing instructions, but not to handle data hazards, control hazards, or exceptions, the controls or, or some data flow of the, this pipeline design is more complex than the in the cycle process, okay? So, so actually in the hardware design, this co handling these corner cases are more difficult, okay? So that's why the hardware design is difficult. Okay, so, so I will conclude the chapter four and then I will introduce the, the some architectural simulators for disk five. So, so in this topic, I will introduce the, some simulation tools for disk five processors. So what is the simulation? What is the simulation? So actually this is hardware and then it's, it is not easy to understand hardware directly. So if, what, what is the hardware? It's just, uh, if you see this machine, then you can find that, oh, this is cheap, and this is a memory, memory chip, like so DRAM or some other memories, like here, is, it's a DRAM DIMMS. So we can find, we can see PCB board, and the PCB boards are connected to other boards, and then, Actually, the computer main boards are very complex, okay? And then these boards are connected to other systems or other IO devices, or it's connected to uh, storage devices, blah, 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 blah. So if we just see the, this hardware, it's not easy to understand. Also, another problem is that it's not easy to modify hardware. It's a hardware. So it, it's, in the software that we can modify software easily. So we can just modify our codes and then we can rerun our uh, modified code. And that's it. But hardware, it's not easy. It's not programmable. So what's the problem? It's not easy to perform hardware research because if we want to add new ideas to 
on your new hardware, but if it is not easy to modify your hardware, then that means it's not easy to test your ideas on this hardware. Okay, so we, <clears throat> some researchers provide the simulation tools. So simulation tools is just a software that emulate the behavior of a computer hardware. What does that mean? <laughs> so, the problem is the how to add your ideas on the hardware. So and then it's, it's not easy. So we can use software, the software that emulate. So emulate just in, just uh, so emulate the behavior of hardware with the software, okay? That is called the simulation tools. Or, so, and then if this, these simulation tools are used for architectural research, then these tools are called the architectural research simulators, okay? So architecture simulators means that it's a software that emulates the operation of computer processors or systems. Okay. Uh, so, and then, so this software, and then we can use this software for architecture research or architecture study, okay? And then I will introduce uh, several tools for risk five processor or risk five system uh, in this time. And then first I will introduce the assembly simulator. So what is the assembly simulator? So we learned about the risk five assemblers. So that means these assemblers are this assembler instructions are one to one map the risk five machine instructions. But actually the risk five is not uh, is not widely used in the uh, commercial commercial uh, computer systems. So actually for the com commercial computer systems, we frequently use uh, x86 ISR and or ARM ISR. Okay, but we don't have risk five computers yet. So it's not easy to run our uh, assembly codes or assembly instructions on risk five computers, okay? So, but, but we can use the cross compiler. So cross compiler means that, so usually if the, our code is compiled by a certain compiler, then on the, for example, if our code is compiled on the x86 system, then our code is compiled to the x86 instructions, okay? And then these instructions are executed by x86 processors. But if we don't have risk five computers, then it's not easy. we cannot compile our codes, and then we cannot run our codes on the disk five computers. So in you know, order to support the, some compi compiling and some emulation of the disk five computers, then we can use the cross compiler. So cross compiler means that this compiler runs on the x86 systems, but this cross compiler generate the code for risk five computers. Okay. What cross compiler runs on the x86 system? This is our code. Then cross compiler translate our code into risk five instructions. Okay. And also we can use the virtualization tools such as Kremlin. So with the Kremlin, then we can compile and run any binaries on the 
host systems. It's very similar to the uh, virtual box or some VMware is a virtual, uh, virtual machine system. But with the virtual machine that we can use, actually with a virtual machine like a VM, virtual box or VMware, we can just use the same ISA, ISA system. So <clears throat> on the x86, x86 computers, then we can run the operating system that runs on the same ISA system, like x86. So that means we cannot run operating system that runs on the ARM-based ISA. So with the virtual machine, like virtual box, we cannot run ARM operating system with this virtual machine. But Camu is different. With the Camu, we can run the ARM-based operating system on the x86 machine. But the performance is very low, but we can run the operating system or applications compiled for different instruction set architecture. But these applications also can be run on the camel. Okay. So we can use the, these cross compilers or virtualization tools such as Camel to run risk five code. So you can find the, the several risk five assembly simulators like Jupyter, RAS, IV6, or you can find, also use the risk five Camel. Okay. So if you are interested, then you can visit the, these site and then, okay, and then you can run your uh, assembly code. Okay. So this is the Jupyter, the disk five assembly simulator. So with the Jupyter, then you can run also disk five assembly code, and then also you can check the contents of the registers and the memory or cache memories. Okay. Okay. Also, there is uh, an architectural simulators for disk five called the RIPES. So this is the replical RISC V architecture simulator. And I believe if you use the, this simulator, then I, you can be, uh, you can easily understand how instructions are executed in the pipeline machine. Okay, so I will show the example. Oh, yeah. So can you see the, my screen? So you can find, so I believe you can find the, the five stage risk five processor. And then, so actually this the architecture of this processor is a little bit different from what we learned in this course. So what is different? So different is the, actually the branch is, French instruction is a uh, branch instruction is handled in EX stage, and then branch instruction has its own unit for executing of comparison, like actually the subtraction. Okay, and then except to this, actually the overall architecture of the, this five stage risk five processor is similar to the five stage processor we learned in this course, okay? So if you see the uh, this uh, simulator, and you can learn the some, you can, you can run RISC-V assembly code with uh, this simulator, okay? So, so and then this, in this uh, simulator, it's a, it's a graphical RISC-V simulator, you can find the, Contents of the register file here. So like so x0 and then so you can find the value of the value of each register here. So this is the instruction memory. So this, you can also find the contents of the instruction memory here. And then if you click the this arrow button, then 
you can find that each instruction is located which uh, pipeline stages so here. here. So also you can execute the instructions clock by clock like here. And then also in this case, the jump is executed here. And you can find that the pipelines are flushed. Okay. And then new instructions are fetched in the instruction fetch stage. So, so I believe some students uh, struggle to understand how instructions are executed inside of a pipeline processor. So, so this is the real hardware. So it's not, it's a little different. So actually if we just see the instructions like software instructions, so it's instructions are just executed step by step from top to bottom. So, and then for the single cycle processor, it's easy to understand because instructions are executed every cycle to so complete its operation every cycle. But in the pipeline processor, instructions flow from instruction fetch stage to the right back stage. And then multiple instructions are executed. That means that processed by each stage of a pipeline processor. So if you use the this graphical tool, then I believe you can easily understand how pipelines work. Okay. You can click here so you can see the how instructions are processed in the pipeline processor. Also, if you click the this button, the, you can change the process architecture. So this is the single cycle is five processor. So it's a, I believe it's identical to the single cycle processor we learned in this course. Okay except the branch instruction. <laughs> the branch instructions, branch instructions are executed by dedicated hardware here. And then except this, the hardware is identical, okay? And you can find the other processor like a five stage processor without hazard detection and without boarding or hazard detection here. So, Five stages. And also, but this process architecture is a little bit different. So it is. Um, here. So, so branch is here. Branch has its own dedicated hardware. So you can find that. Or well, sometimes this is the MOX for right back operation, but you can see that. Oh, this MOX received a PC from here. So it is because some instructions require to store program counter to the target register. But I did not explain about the, this instruction, but risk five also support a certain instruction that stores program counter value to the target register. So you can find uh, some different part in this pipeline processor, but major part are similar, okay? So, so, uh, so in this time I explained about the, uh, how, exceptions are handled in the pipeline processor. Also, I introduced the uh, simulation tool for risk five processors. So, and then now I will conclude the chapter four, the processor design, and, but you need to know that the process of this chapter four is the very important chapter in this course. And then actually so you need to understand how the pipeline processor works because this is very basic of processor architecture, okay? So I will stop here because we have only five minutes and but it's not enough to 
move on next chapter of the discourse. So I will stop here. Uh, and then we will uh, we will move on to chapter five. It's a memory hierarchy or memory system architecture of the computer system. So this memory system is also the important topic. Okay. So in the next class, we will learn about the memory hierarchy. Okay, so I'll stop here and do you have any questions? Okay. Uh, uh, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions or issues, then post your questions on the Piazza. Okay. And please make use of the Piazza. Okay. Thank you for listening and see you in the next class. Bye guys.